So far, we understood that testing is something which is all about executing test cases and finding effects. But also, when you find an effect, it is really important to dig around the nearby areas or in technical terms we say, it is really important to see that any related module or functionality is also having a defect. And that's what we call it as defect clustering. So let's talk more about it today. Hello everyone and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nirish Kumar Singh and today we are talking about defect clustering. Defect clustering is another important principle of testing which generally talks about some of the other aspects other than the one which we have discussed already. And when it comes to defect clustering, the term says defect which we already know is an issue in the program or any kind of functionality which you're testing. And when it comes to clustering, it generally means that grouping or gathering together. So the principle together says that uh, defect clustering is something where you find a grouping of defects together. Now, what is that and why is that possible? How is that possible and how to overcome that as a part of testing? So generally, we say that it's not mandatory. Now, when we talk about the principle, it basically states that it's not always possible that you find defects in bigger or complex modules. Sometimes it is also possible that the bigger or complex modules may not have any defects, but the smaller modules will have more or comparatively more defects than the bigger ones. Now, what is that and how is that possible and what exactly is defect clustering? So when it comes to preparing the modules, writing the code or program for each module, of course, we take extra precautions, extra measures, extra you know, efforts to make some complex or bigger modules. Because you also understand being a developer that there's a lot of things to be done here and then probably we may go wrong. So you take extra precautions for that or probably this is something new like new technology coming up and you have never worked on that so you follow everything systematically and it is also possible at the same time that you have taken so many measures so many practices or efforts to avoid any mistakes probably you never go wrong so it is possible when it comes to testing that you do not find any defect in that bigger module or complex module but yes on the other side the developer may have overconfidence with respect to the simpler modules which he has been building for several years now and probably make 100 mistakes there. Then it comes to testing, of course the tester will be able to find a lot of things there. But why do we have this principle now? Because sometimes testers also have an illusion that when a bigger module doesn't have any defect, how come the smaller one will have? So we have created this principle called as defect clustering, which is only for the testers intuition that hey testers look at this principle, which says it is also possible that defects must have scattered instead of like scattering in a bigger module, they would have been gathered in smaller modules. So for testers, it is really important that they do not get driven by the size of the module. Rather, they have this understanding in their mind that sometimes the bigger modules may not have any issues, but the smaller may have. So do not ignore any module irrespective of their size or complexity or risk involved. You have to have independent perspective or independent approach when you come to each module, irrespective of their relation, size, or criticality. So that's what is more important to find out. And also we say that sometimes it is possible that when you find a defect in a particular module, you do check nearby area or nearby related functionalities of that module as well. Why is that so? Because once this particular functionality is affected, and it has a defect, probably the other functionalities may also have. So we always try to go, you know, surrounding together to fulfill the defect clustering principle as well. So putting it all together, defect clustering is a principle which states that it is not always mandatory that the defects will be distributed in bigger modules, 
Sometimes it is also possible that all the defects would have grouped in smaller modules rather than being distributed in bigger modules. So do not take it for granted. Things can be, uh, you know, distributed in big or probably everything comes together in smaller module. So that's all from here team. Hope you enjoyed this video. This was a great learning with respect to principles and defect clustering altogether. So that's all from here in this particular episode. I hope you really enjoyed this and definitely learned something new today. If you have anything else beyond this, feel free to comment below and let me let me know so that I can help you to understand that better by responding to your comments and questions. So we'll be getting back to you with another episode of Testing in Nutshell with more interesting concepts of testing. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.